Okay, today we're going to do the 1st John chapter 2. It's a little bit longer than yesterday's, um, but I'm excited to read it with you, uh, give you my input on it, just some notes that I took, and then I encourage you to read 1st uh, John chapter 2. You know, the idea is that we're always supposed to be ready, ready for our Messiah's return, and you know, you know not fall asleep. asleep and to better ourselves and refine ourselves in his image every day. And to do that, we must be in the word and the word must abide in us. In us. And, you know, we all get busy and, um, you know, it, it escapes us. Our days escapes us and we haven't embedded that truth in us. And, you know, there's always creative ways to do that, whether you listen to, you know, praise music in your car and you're praying and talking to him as you're going along your way, um, listening to a sermon, um, you know, on your eye, you, you know, downloading a sermon or listening to it in your earbuds, um, listening to scripture um, on YouTube. That's really easy to do where you could just, you know, really let it absorb into your, uh, into your system. There's always ways that we can, you know, work God and his message into our every, everyday lives, but there's nothing more powerful than reading the word, studying the word, researching and journaling and praying, and then repenting as the Holy Spirit speaks to you. So let's get into this. We're going to read First uh, John chapter 2. Um, we read, read the other chapter, chapter 1, yesterday. I am also reading from a New International Version. I know that everybody has their opinion on which is the best one. For teaching sakes, this is easy. And so we're not going to get into debate about that, but I just wanted you to know which version. Uh, my dear children, let me see if I can read without these. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to us. The Father speaks to the Father in our defense. It's Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is atoning. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commandments. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he says, what he commands, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love and is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new commandment, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. The old commandment is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new commandment. It is tr it, its truth is seen in him and you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in light and there is nothing, <clears throat> nothing in him to make him stumble. But oh, whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks around in darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. I write you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on the account of his name. I write you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you have known the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you. And you have overcome the evil one. The next title of this next paragraph is, Do Not Love the World. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of a sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and what he does comes not from the Father, 
but from the world. The world and its desires pass away and the man who does the will of God lives forever. Warning against the Antichrist, plural. Dear children, this is the last hour as you have heard that anti the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it. And because you lie, because no lie comes from the truth. Who is a liar? <clears throat> it is the man who denies Jesus is Christ or Yeshua is the Messiah. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, and whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you will also remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what we promised, and, and this is what He promised us, even eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need to you do you do not need anyone to teach you. But at, but as his anointing teaches you about all these things, and as the anointing is real, it is not counterfeit. Just as it is just, just as it is taught you, remain in him. God is love, and. <clears throat> I think this is the second part of this. And now, dear children, continue to him so that when he appears, meaning Yeshua reappears on earth, that we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right will be born of him. So that's First uh, John chapter 2. I love John. Just a reminder, you know, John was a disciple and um, a very dear friend of Yeshua, uh, the Messiah. He was a Jewish Jewish man, and um, he was special to him for so many reasons. I mean, he was the only one at the foot of the cross um, of the disciples. Um, you know, obviously there were women there too, but as far as the disciples, he was the only one at the foot of the cross. Um, he's the only one that wasn't martyred. And so when I read him, I feel like I'm talking, to, you know, when I'm reading, I feel like Yeshua's buddy, best friend, pal, um, almost like, you know, a brother to him. I mean, if you give somebody, if I said to one of my friends, hey, when I pass away, I want you to take care of my mom, you know that that's my sister, you know, or that's my brother. And so they were really tight. Um, so I love, I love listening to John and you know what? He doesn't mince words. Um, so here, here's some of my notes from this. So this is what I got out of it. We need to make sure we need to make sure that when Jesus returns, we are not ashamed of how we've acted, how we lived, and all of that. We're not perfect. We're going to mess up. But when we mess up, we need to find ourselves in repentance, and we need to be in pursuit of Him to fill His holiness and on all of that. Uh, Yeshua. Um, he speaks for us. He is the only intercessor, uh, interme intermediary between us and God. There's no nobody else that's going to be the intermediary. He reconciles us with the Father. It's not an angel. It's not a saint. Uh, it's not a disciple. You, your, uh, the way to the Father is through the Son, and He speaks on your behalf. If you claim you know Jesus, if you claim you know Yeshua, and you don't follow the commands that he does and says for us to do, you don't follow the commandments um, and his instructions, then you really, truly don't know him. And you're in jeopardy. Let's, 
you know, let's just say it like it is. If we don't follow the commandments and we don't obey him and do what he says to do, then we don't truly know him. We must walk as he did. If we hate someone, if we hate a politician, if we hate our neighbor, if we hate our brother or sister, our mother or cousin or aunt, if we hate anyone, uh, the word does not abide in us. We don't belong. We cannot hate. We must abide in love. Hate blinds us from the fullness of the Father and for knowing the Son. We have to overcome the devil on all levels, and that includes fear and hate and all of these things that, um, that are evil. He says, do not love the world or anything of it. That means, you know, we cannot, we cannot um, always want things. The lust, uh, the desires, the sexual desires, the greed, the pride, status, approval, you know, all the worldly things. We cannot love the world um, and the things of the world. And then he talks about antichrist, which was plural. It wasn't just one antichrist. He says, basically, anyone who denies that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Son of God is an antichrist. They do not have knowledge of the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he says, when you acknowledge the Son, you're acknowledging God, and God lives in you, and you know God. But if you deny the Son then the Father does not live in you and you do not know him either. So that was some of my notes um, from today. That's uh, second, sec, 1 John chapter 2. I want to bless you and uh, hope that you have a wonderful day. This We are in crucial times right now. It is imperative and there's an urging on my spirit to share the gospel, for, for people to get into the word, to know what Jesus said we're supposed to be doing, to get in a place of repentance and prayer and praise, praying for this country, praying for the world, praying against coronavirus, praying for protection, praying against evil, against the occult, um, and against the spirit of division, the spirit of hate, the spirit of fear. There are so many things that we can pray for. You know, watch the news or look at the headlines. Write down everything you see. You know, yesterday I did that. I prayed for Beirut. I prayed for, for um, you know, that if these vaccines come out and people take them, that no one is hurt um, from them if they're not ready or they have anything evil around them. I pray against racism and division in this country. I pray that the mayors across the country would make wise decisions to protect the innocent. Um, I prayed for, you know, peaceful reopenings. Um, you know, the, for the coronavirus to go away and to be cursed and not done. I pray that, you know, social media would be fair and they wouldn't, uh, you know, censor, censor things that shouldn't be censored. I pray that the voting process, there would be, it would be fair. I pray to pray for a hurricane, you know, victims, um, that, you know, all of these things, our relations with the Chinese uh, and the Chinese government, there are so many things that I pray for in addition to the people that I'm worried about. Um, I prayed a long list of that and just, um, you know, keep it in your face. So anyway, I just want to bless you today and uh, may he shine his face on you and, um, and may you uh, just be filled with the Holy Spirit and filled with wisdom and discernment. And uh, let's just let's just uh, let's just get closer and closer and closer to him and press in. And, you know, we need his help now more than ever. And we need him to guide us into what we are to say, what we're to do and how we are to um, to contribute to um, uh, positive reform and success and uh, and blessings for this country and for each person individually. Love you guys. Have a blessed day.